This is Next Radio. Next Radio. With broadcast Bionics. Innovative solutions for creative people. How are we doing? All right? Is everyone keeping the time? Right, now it's all going to go pear-shaped. The breakfast show health check for people who still, uh, work in commercial radio where you've got a breakfast show producer will be doing something about producers later on. And uh, this is my top 10 things that you should do to check that your breakfast show is performing to the best of its ability. First, do they turn up at least 45 minutes before the show? <laughs> do they? Uh, or do they swan in five minutes before the top of the hour? Uh, and do they have a post show meeting every day? Uh, both of those things are absolutely essential. If your guys aren't doing that, then they should be doing that. If they aren't doing it, they're not doing the best that they can do. Do they have one major planning session every two weeks? Everyone gets stuck on the treadmill of working for tomorrow's show. But are you looking further ahead? Are you making sure those significant anniversaries are logged and you're planning further ahead than just one show? Do they have a set of team rules? This is really useful if you've got a dysfunctional breakfast show <laughs> where, where you might have two or three characters who don't necessarily get on as well as they should do. They're always tricky ones. So I always find it really essential to sit down and define the rules that they all agree to, that they've all got to bring to the table every day, and then stick to the rules. Do they complete a planning sheet for the next day's show? Just about every breakfast show that I've ever worked with does one, but how many times do they just fill it in so they can leave it on the program director's desk and they don't actually take heed to what's on that piece of paper? You know, you've got to have a map. If you want to know where you're going, you need a map. And if you've got a map, you can stray off the route and come back to the end point. But if you don't have that map, then you're buggered. Do they get well-prepped listeners on the air every day? How often do you hear a presenter saying, and how are you? What's the weather like? We don't want any of that crap. What we want is to go straight in with something that's relevant to that particular listener. So the phone-up or the producer should be finding out something significant about the caller before they're brought to air. And then you can go straight in and say something that's of significance to that listener and bring the conversation to life. It does two things. It cuts a lot of time out, a lot of preamble that you don't need, and it makes the listener think as though you really care about what's happening in their life, and therefore they warm to you and you get more out of them. Do they prepare, I mean really prepare, at least two stories about their own lives every day. This is really difficult. If you've got a hard-working breakfast show team, then their life is the breakfast show, and they're not really having a normal life. How many times have you heard that argument? Well, there are certain times in the day and certain times of the week where they do have a normal life. So it's really important they write things down that have happened in their lives so they can build up a backlog of stories about their lives. They're always the best ones, the real stories that have happened to them in their lives. If they haven't got one of them, you can take something from the news, from the internet, and you can adapt it. That's not lying, that's called production. <laughs> Is the show becoming famous for something? Our show's famous for being fun and topical. How many times have you heard that? Well, every show's fun and topical. So what is your show becoming renowned for in the market that you work in? What is your show becoming famous for? The easy one are benchmarks, like the 10 grand then. Prank calls, not as popular these days as they used to be. Uh, rescues, 
that's when you find some innocuous text or email comes in from a listener and they need your help. And it's, it's something that's really valid. It's not something that's frivolous. And you can really build a big reputation for helping people. And that can be one of your real key assets, as well as doing charity events as well. But if you can associate it with an individual, for example, uh, a young child who needs to go out to, to America to have a special operation or something like that, and you get behind that family and you help them get to America and you raise all the funds that they need, then you can become renowned for that, as well as being fun and topical, of course. Do they respect the music? Do they cut or talk over songs? Uh, most breakfast shows now use breakfast show edits on songs, so they've got shorter songs anyway. Uh, but again, the number of times you'll hear a presenter take a chainsaw to a song and hack it in two uh, is not a pleasant experience for the listener. It's not a pleasant experience for the presenter. So that's about thinking ahead and making sure that you respect the music. Do they do a planned hook and tease into every ad break? Probably not, but you should be doing at least two or three in an hour. But to hook and tease, you need content. So if you haven't filled in your prep sheet and you haven't planned out your stories and you haven't got your topic sorted, then it's very difficult to do a hook and a tease. And a hook and a tease in a song just doesn't cut it anymore because pretty much everyone's playing the same songs anyway. So that's not going to work. You've got to hook and tease content. You've got to do it about 20 minutes ahead. And it's got to be laser pinpointed. It's got to be at 10 to 8 this morning, we're going to talk about X, Y, and Z. Don't forget, that's 20 minutes from now at 10 to 8. Do they bring a sense of soul property to the show? This is really difficult, uh, but this is what the most successful breakfast shows drive their success through. It's making sure that when someone misses a show, it registers with them and they go to work or they go whatever they go and they think, oh my goodness, I missed that show. I wonder what was happening on that show this morning. And to bring that sense of soap opera, you need some sense of continuity that runs not just through the show, but through the week and through the months. There needs to be some character-led uh, stuff in the show about that presenter or the presenters that makes them come back every day and want to know what's going to happen in today's episode. A sense of soap opera. So, if they're doing all ten of those things, then you're doing well. How many of your breakfast shows cover the next four steps in this order. Prepare. What does prepare mean? Because everyone says, oh, I'm doing my prep. They're reading the toilet, you know, they've gone to the toilet with a newspaper or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> it's gathering material from your imagination, your community, your region, your universe, your family, your life. Everything that you do can be a topic on the show. And you should always note it down. If you've got an iPhone, use a little notepad or whatever. Whatever is happening in your life, note it down. That is prep. It's not just going through the newspapers or going through websites. Uh, and by the way, I detest prep services. I think they're the most facile, useless things. And if you're paying for one, well, more fool you. Always gather more material than you need. Always used to go into the studio as a presenter with at least 10 things. And then when I used two, I knew I had to top it up. And then if I, I knew I had 10 things on the list, I felt comfortable and I felt safe. Because if one thing didn't work, I knew I had another one to go to. And make sure you do put them in your prep document. Rehearse. That means practice. Uh, for those of you who are too young or don't know, uh, the Markham and Wise show was the most successful uh, comedy double act show in the UK uh, 20, 30 years ago. 
uh, used to get uh, 25 million viewers for the Christmas special. They used to rehearse every show for two weeks, every day leading up to the show. And all the ad-libs were scripted. And all the asides were scripted. But they rehearsed it so well, it looked as though it was all natural. And rehearsing doesn't mean going into a studio before you do the show. It means during the record, when the record's playing, map it out in your head, talk it through with your co-host or your producer, if you've got one, and make sure you know what you're doing, what the beginning is, what the middle is, and what, most importantly, is the end of that link. Less is more, a fundamental way to make communication tighter. Most authors write far more than they ever end, that ever ends up in their book or on the page. So as part of that rehearsal process, try and pressy it down, get it down to significant sentences and bullet points, but make it sound natural as well. And finally, this is the fun part. Perform on the air. Radio is fun. It should be stupid. It should be daft. It should be devil may care. It should be you against the suits. It should be about having some craziness in, in, in the studio. And if you engender all those other things that I've talked about, then you'll have fun. And if you're having fun, funny things will happen. But if you try and go in and be funny, most radio presenters aren't stand-up comedians, so they won't be funny. But if you have fun on the air, then funny things will happen. The breakfast producer. This is just a quick precy of what a breakfast producer should bring to the organization as well as the show. He or she should have a bigger vision of the show so they can stand back and they can relate to what the presenters are going through. They're the program director of the breakfast show. This is, this is a really useful function because the program director can use them as a conduit instead of going direct to the talent. So the program director can uh, make sure they don't have to say tricky things to the talent. They can do it through the producer. But also the producer can represent the talent with the program director the other way around. So the producer fulfills quite a multifaceted role. And they can relieve the pressure on you once the investment of trust and mindset and thinking is established. That takes time, it takes training. I think we have far too many young breakfast show producers. Uh, I think you need to have a level of experience and maturity so that the talent respect you and the program director respects the producer as well. And believe it or not, the producer probably has an ego too. If you work in radio, you've got to have an ego. Uh, the presenter, the talent, they all have an ego. The producer probably has as big an ego, if not a bigger ego. Be in touch with listeners at all times. Create the target. Know who you're talking to. Whether it's a 23-year-old female, build a picture up of her. Is she single or is she a single mother? Does she have a, a job? Does she have two or three part-time jobs? You know, what sort of person are you talking to? You notice I, I pretty much refer to a female because mostly in commercial radio we're targeting females. And don't forget the station is a brand, but the extreme personalities can still sit comfortably in that brand as long as they understand the brand values of the station. So it's not about the, the, the radio personality. It is about the listener. It's, it's the media-savvy listener who counts on you and your show every day to get something that they need from you. So make sure that you're respectful when you deliver that. And the key to star quality in 2013 is about entertain me or talk about me. So when you're telling a story, make sure it's not too me, me, me. Make sure it's more you, you, you and relate it to your listener, even though it's a story that you've got into from your experience. And it goes without saying, Facebook, Twitter, online, that's all part of the, the package now. 
Are your rules that clear? If you've got a, a multi-team, if you've got two or three people in the team, it's entirely uh, probable that these days you might have two females in a team or two males in a team. It's much more difficult to get the character definition set right for the listeners to make sure they understand which character is who. So you need to do a lot of work on that with the talent and make sure they define their personalities totally separately on the air and the listener knows who is who. And are you taking credit for the service elements? How many times do you hear those thrown away? How many times do presenters don't listen to the news? You know, I always used to make presenters drive the news bulletins because then they had to listen to the news bulletins. Uh, the weather, the travel, how often is that thrown away? You know, the guy's just read the weather out, 30 seconds later he hasn't a clue what he said. You know, these are important service elements in the show, but they do get thrown away. And are you taking credit for them? And do you care about the service elements? Because if you're bored with them, then sure as hell, the listeners are bored as well. And if you can't play it, then talk about it. If you're on an AC station and, you know, you, you got, you, you, there's a, a really hot new song, uh, like the Katy Perry song at the moment that you, ca you can't really play, you can still talk about it because Katy Perry is a big personality. And that, by that, it, it keeps you in touch with the total audience. And selling the music is still one of the most important things. Here we go, the final thing. Winning shows are a series of one. If you do all of this, you will be successful. One thing per quarter hour that commands attention that people prick their ears up to. One item per hour that causes a response. When you get your topic going and you get people calling in or, t or texting in or tweeting or whatever, one thing per hour. One thing per day that is shareable that people will go into their community, into work or whatever and talk about what you've been talking about on the air today. One thing per quarter that listeners remember, and I mean really remember. If you did help that family who needed to take the child to America for a special operation, they will remember that because that has been significant to that family and it will pull at heartstrings. And one thing per year that makes you legendary. So if you've got floods or something significant that's, that's happened in your market, and you do something to help people, then you will become legendary for that. And that's it. 27 seconds to spare. Well, the health check session with the breakfast show was so good, and I think it doesn't just apply to breakfast show, I think it applies to every person that's on the radio. Really useful, practical tips that you can immediately kind of take back and uh, talk to your teams about and start to work through. And that's really great to be able to leave with something that you can immediately put into practice. It's really, really helpful. I just wanted to get a meeting at work. I'm going to go back and get everybody sat down and go, right, we need, to, we need a health check here. This is Next Radio. Next Radio. With broadcast Bionics. Innovative solutions for creative people.